while I was uh, the president of the University of Lagos Students Union, uh, we had a, a number of activities, I mean, that I may not even be able to recall all. But I think at that time, we had as our primary focus the defense of the rights, the welfare of students in the university. And we were also favorably disposed to challenging, you know, authoritarian and tyrannical policies of the military regime at that time. I recall that as uh, the president of the University of Lagos Students Union, we had to organize, you know, a, a mass, mass rally against the election which General Sani Abacha tried to conduct on non-party basis. And I recall that uh, that enders a lot of visit to the State uh, Security Service SSS headquarters at Changisha. Indeed, the human rights activist at that time who ought to address the rally, Chief Ganifayemi, was arrested and was prevented from coming to address us. But immediately after the rally, we felt, uh, we felt insulted. We felt, we felt uh, slighted by the military junta at that time for denying us our fundamental human right of associating with Chief Ganifayemi at that time. And uh, we decided to go and ask for his release at the SSS, SSS headquarters in Changisha here in Lagos. I recall that uh, on our way there, live bullets were fired on us. Some of us were arrested. And it took the grace of even the Ghanifayemi chambers. And I recall too, Femi Falano chambers, to secure the release of quite a number of students at that time. So the point I'm making is that unionism at, at that time afforded us the opportunity you know, to minister to the welfare needs of our colleagues who, are, who were students at that time. We were also able to challenge obnoxious uh, policies of the university administration. I recall that uh, the university administration at that time tried to hike school fees from the paltry amount we were paying at that time to upwards of 3000 5000 And uh, the administration had no courtesy of even discussing with the students' union at that time. So when we got wind of it, we organized a series of meetings with the with the administration and uh, i think at the 13th meeting the vice the then vice chancellor challenged the union that if you know that you have the wit uh, let's see who backs who blinks the first and uh, that gave us the opportunity to mobilize our colleagues mobilize students like we have never done in the university before and we confronted the administration and ensured that there were no hike in school fees at that time. So while we were at the university level challenging obnoxious university policies, we did not also close our eyes to supranational government policies that we were sure would have negative consequences on the life of students on campus. So it was a, a life of challenging autocracy, authoritarianism, tyranny, and dictatorship, wherever it reared its head. Now, as a lecturer and a member of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, if students display that kind of activities now, would you support I them? I them to display such activism. The only thing, you know, I, I, I seem to kick against is unbridled violence. And recall that even in all of this uh, uh, resistance against autocracy, against tyranny, against dictatorship, we were as responsible, we were as... We were as, uh, we tried as much as possible to be non-violent. And up to tomorrow, I am still an advocate of a non-violent protest. I tell my students everywhere they go, the reason for a university education is to make you an activist, is to make you a better person. A better person is not a docile person. For goodness sake, you cannot hope to change society by docility. But in doing that, you must be guided by some ethics. You must be guided by some principles. You must be guided by some virtues. And those are the kind of virtues that I try to inculcate in my students as I speak with you. I just left a class. I made it abundantly clear that demand dies in each and every one of them. 
He who in the face of tyranny or oppression keeps quiet and do nothing. So I am still an advocate of protest. But you have to be method you have to be methodic. You have to be you have to be guided in the kind of protest that that you embark upon. And then you also must be logical. You know, you don't just want to protest for protesting's sake. I didn't do that as a student, and I will not encourage that now that, I'm, uh, uh, that I teach them. So, if there are valid grounds for protest, even today, I will still join students of this university if there are valid grounds to do so. You must be guided by the principle of non-violence. You don't achieve anything by burning down buildings, and but you can achieve a lot by non-violent protest. It, it, Gandhi pulled down regimes without i mean throwing a stone so i and i think that is the direction we should be moving uh helpless uh, helpless and hapless students will not be gone down by you know trigger happy uh, frustrated uh, police officers on the altar of mere demonstration so when we demonstrate which is our fundamental human right and we have the leg legitimate right to do so we must be guided you know, in, in all of these activities. We are actually privileged to see one of the photos of the time you were leading students movement that time and then we saw a, a particular uh, car where you were inside it and a coffin was you know, on top of the car. What, what actually happened? Did you lose one of your kids and or did somebody just fall? What, what led to that person's death? That's a very long, long, long story. I don't know whether you have the time to take the story. I can make it as brief as I can. You recall that... Uh, the, the, the history of the University of Lagos Students Union has been that of resistance. Indeed, one of our past presidents, the well-celebrated uh, past president of the union, who incidentally is also the brain behind Sahara Reporter, Omoye uh, in his uh, courageous attempt to stamp out cultism on Unilag campus, was attacked by, you know, these vicious elements who call themselves... Uh, Cult. So after the attack, the union, including my humble self, launched a, a you know waged a war against cultists and cultism on campus. In the midst of the struggle, some of us were arrested and detained, some of us were taken to Kirikiri and all of that. But incidentally, one of our keda. Idonije Jones, who incidentally is my senior, uh, one year my senior in the Department of Political Science, died uh, in detention. After the struggle, the university management published their names, names of those who would appear before the panel, including the name of Idonije Jones. So in, we, while we were ruminating, it's a long story I told you, I'm just trying to be as brief as I can. So in all of the story, the panel that was set up was meeting. And because we wanted to present them with, we want to bring Idonije Jones before the panel, hmm. we decided to go and excavate Idonije Jones' uh, coffin and <laughs> present it to the panel so that they can try him. <laughs> but the, the coffin worked wonder because as soon as we entered the council chamber, the venue of uh, the trial, and on sighting the coffin, members of the panel took to their heels and left heaps of files on the table for us to... So we carted away the files. And in examining the files, we even saw the roles which principal officers of the university, the university administration, and their, and their collaborators played in the attack on Omoye Leshoware and, you know, the, the attack, the, the siege on the University of Lagos campus. And that opened a lot of vistas as to the workings of the university administration. So uh, that that coffin was symbolic, and in in, in the, when I, while I was president, we had to carry the coffin twice. That was on the first occasion, and on the second occasion was on the first anniversary of the death of Ken Saruwiwa, and uh, we had to carry the coffin symbolically to signify, you know, the the, the vicious killing of Ken Saruwiwa that year. And I, if I remember well, tenth of November, nineteen ninety six. 
or, or thereabout. That was so twice we we had to resort to carrying that coffin mm. on the first occasion and then on the anniversary. Of so much effort actually to ensure that you stamp out cultism in the school. Then and now, what is this? What is the rate at which cultism is there still cultism here despite all the effort you guys? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I think the university administration will be in a better position to answer the question whether there is cultism on campus. I'm not a cultist, so I don't know. Whether the, the only thing I can say is that they have never left campus. Maybe they are now driven underground. In our days, they were very, very. They were in our days, they were. They were very. Uh, they were very visible. You know, within a few weeks, few days, you could see you could see skirmishes between and amongst them. You may not see all of those today because as you may know a lot have changed about the university system including the quality and the caliber of people who are in the university at the moment so it may not be correct to say that there are no cultists on campus there, there are there may be but what i know is that they are div driven underground their activities are more clandestine and more nocturnal now and uh, you know we see sparkles of it here and there you know once in a semester or thereabout. So I think they are just more driven on the ground than to say that there are no cultists on campus. From, uh, I recall specifically when we wanted to organize that rally against uh, uh, General Sani Abacha's election, there was the talk about um, some ministers of special duties trying to reach out to us to shelve the idea. And I mean, but you see, the point is. Once you are guided by some form of ideological principle and you are clear about where you think society should be and you are disgruntled about the current state of inertia, the present state of inactivity, particularly amongst the youth, amongst those you think should be at the vanguard of social change, then you cannot but be resolute. You know, at that time, we were resolute about refusing all kinds you know, of inducement, whether from the administration or from government. But you cannot say the same today. Because the last time I saw that, uh, that charlatan who calls himself Nance President, Gbadebo uh, something, you know, you needed to see the, the kind of wristwatch, you know, on his wrist. In those days, Students will cut that hand at the point where that wristwatch was put. But today, it's as if it's the norm. You see people call themselves nuns or whatever, welcoming wives of uh, president wherever they went, welcoming, uh, you know, paying, doing advertorial in newspaper to congratulate head of state, to congratulate those who have contributed to the decadence, to the rot in the society. And they give them princely, you know, princely ovation and uh, and uh, red carpet reception when they come around. I think all of these represents the perversion, you know, of the extant values and virtues for which students' activism, you know, uh, was identified with in the past. I was scandalized the last time the wife of... Uh, uh, the president visited the university and then Nance had a placard welcoming her to say that I mean uh, uh, this, these, these are not the, the, the kind of you know student activism that we grew up to know so a lot is wrong with student activism uh, now you know and times have really really changed I'm surprised when I, each time I see the Gbadibor guy you know laying claim to be Nance something I wonder what's happening, what's happening to this generation. Shortly before the, the transition to the supposed democratic uh, whatever, where everybody now feels that you need Nance office to be close to a governor or to a senator or to the head of state, as the case may be. Even this bad boy of, 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 of a character is, is in the, the, the national conference. So what manner of representation is that going to give to the youth of the country? You know, so you begin to wonder what kind of country that we are.
if it is the likes of uh, Yinkagbadebo and Co that will be representing Nigerian students at a place where their destiny, their future will be discussed. So I think we missed it totally shortly before the transition to civil rule where people began to see it. I mean, those offices, NAN, Student Union President, as an opportunity to get close to governor and get patronage. It's a patron client relationship. All they need is money. You see NAN's president riding a uh, chauffeur driven. When it has never been so before. And then there's uh, the elite class amongst the students' union, uh, whatever they call themselves. <coughs> so you, you cannot but be. Be, be, you cannot but lose hope in, 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 in a generation like that. Recently, I was reading in the papers, I think it was late last year, that uh, Nas was paying a courtesy call to the governor of uh, uh, Aqua Ibom State. Nas? I don't, I don't know. Let's come back to the University of Lagos, for example. Junilag uh, suspended or say maybe banned. Uh, student unionism on campus. What was responsible for that and what exercise or what effort are you putting in place to ensure that it is reinstated? You see, I think they banned uh, students' union when there was a violent demonstration on campus. The business lodge was touched. The dean of students' uh, affairs house was burnt down. I mean, we had one or two destructions here and there. Was that during your time? No, no, no. That was close to 10 years after my, my time. I mean, that happened, I think, around 2005. I left here in 1995, so that's clear 10 years. I told you that I'm not an advocate of uh, violent. violent demonstration, even though I could get a lot of things done without throwing a stone. It's about the power of logic, power of argument. If you ask my student today, they will still tell you that, I mean, I often, you see, you begin to throw stones and, and throw fisticuffs when ideas fail but if you can strategize if you can be creative if you can protest in a manner that you will be effective you can get a lot of things done without throwing it so they burned down quite a number of things on campus we saw it coming anyway because you know we we burned the university administration at that time but they were lethargic about nipping nipping it in the book so after the demonstration they said they banned the union. And you see, sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm very, very uncomfortable when people ask me what I am doing, you know, to resuscitate the union. I'm not a member of the students' union anymore. I have my own association. I am a member of the Academic Staff Union of Universities. And I'm no longer a student for God's sake. And I can't be a student forever. I think the better question is, what are the students themselves doing? It is when the students take the lead, then you can ask people like us, what are you doing to support them? If I go to carry a placard today and say, uh, unban student unionism in Unilag, even yourself will ask me, what is my locus? You know, yes, I was a former student leader. I can't be that forever. I don't believe in those who are student leaders forever. The likes of Ginka uh, Badebo and others. I don't believe in it. You see, we say a luta continua, the struggle continues. As you move from one stage in life to the other, you continue the struggle. Omo Elisho Wore today is continuing the struggle in another realm, not as a student activist. And this is not the first time they are banning students' union in Unilag. I recall several years back, it was banned. Students themselves say, okay, you ban student union, okay, we are forming another committee. And then we formed the Committee for the Restoration of Independence Students' Union, Chrisu on this campus and it was that auspices when you know the, the, the activities were were becoming overwhelming the university had no choice to say okay let's bring back you know this this students union because we can cope more with the students union than when this group who calls themselves Chris. so ask these the students what they themselves are doing you know because a people liberate themselves or not and no oppressor we willingly refuse to oppress you. You will refuse to be oppressed. So if the students of University of Lagos submit themselves to oppression, <laughs> what do you want me to do? So I think the better question to pose is what are we doing to support the unbanning of student union on campus? Can I put it that way? Okay, and I give you the answer. The answer is that 
at several levels. I have met relevant organs of the university, the Students Affairs, critical stakeholders, whom I know could be influential in the unbanning of the union. And they've given their word. I mean, one of the things they told us, even recently there was a retreat for student leaders, newly elected student leaders, you know, in the University of Lagos. I mean, novel idea. I was one of the speakers at the at the forum. And I pointedly put it to the Dean of Students Affairs at the forum that look, we can't continue like this. The, the students must have a platform for them to organize, for them to demonstrate leadership. And if, you, if they spend four years in Unilag and you don't give them the opportunity, you cannot but be breeding conflict. And in fairness, the man cannot but agree with me. But the point to note is that I am aware that there are several efforts to, you know, unban the union. But the management is having some kind of ideas about what union they want to bring forth. If the students agree with them, so be it. If they feel that that will not represent their interest, they know what to do and they should do it. And if they kickstart it and they need any support from people like us in terms of ideas, in terms of, in terms of support, in terms of uh, you know, logistics, whatever support, with the management themselves, they know that we will always be willing to give at, at, at the slightest back. But I tell you, my brother, they, the students themselves need to kickstart the process to unban their union. It's their union. And once they do that, and we see commitment in that regard, I'm sure we can mobilize, you know, all our God-given talent to support them in ensuring that they make a success of uh, the union when it's eventually unbound.